So get started for today's community call. Uh, the first thing that we want to talk about is uh, V2 of moderation. Um, we're thinking about building out uh, tooling for Research Hub users to help moderate specific hubs. Um, we're also thinking about calling moderators editors from here on out, where the idea is that people can recruit editors to Research Hub who are in charge of essentially ensuring high quality content is on each individual hub. We're thinking almost like editors of a journal in the journals to hub paradigm. So um, what we'd like to do is spend some time during the next sprint to help build out some actual like tools to make it easier for editors to do their jobs. Um, and this is just gonna be basically like a stack overflow style moderation system to help ensure like high quality content and community growth. So um, Anton and Kobe have been thinking a little bit about this. Um, I guess, Kobe, do, do you want to maybe pull up the doc we're just looking at and we can give like a quick overview? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, sure. Let me pull it up. I guess before we get started, Nami, how do you feel about um, like the, the title of editor for someone who's like responsible for like curating content and like uh, getting rid of spam and posting like good stuff themselves? Uh, yeah, so the picture that I have is the journal editor, right? And which is a bit like kind of like authoritative figure and that's like kind of feel to it. Um, so, but uh, I think it, so from outside, out, from outside, it feels like more like kind of higher place than I guess a moderator or something like that. From the inside perspective, maybe if you're called as editor, as an academic, I think it kind of feels good also plus more like expected responsibilities and whatnot. So maybe that's kind of feel about it. Just just general user sense. I think that's my guess. So to repeat it back, you, you like the um, term editor because it like fits kind of science more and uh, can help, you know, I think when people get asked to be editors of journals, like it's kind of a compliment. So in a similar vein type thing. Uh, yeah, so I don't know how that's going to be in turn, how dense or like how the validation process is, but I would like see, I can see people wanting to put this editor in their CVs maybe. I don't know if that's saying, but like, uh, yeah, like it's being editor is kind of a big thing, I feel like in academic space, at least that's places that I was in. So uh, maybe a good thing to more expect a little bit more and uh, be consistent and things like that. Totally. Yeah. Uh, resume booster. I mean, I think it would be huge for us if like a uh, editor of the biochemistry hub, like help them, you know, get a job in the future. Um, so, so then people who are editors of journals now, right. It's never like grad students and postdocs, like the like editor in chief will invite some well-known professor in a field to, to be an editor. Like it, it can't just be anybody. Right. And that's why it is a valuable CV thing. Yeah, I think so. Um, and yeah, I mean, like editor has associated editors working on them and like things like that. So um, that's like, like there's structure to it. Um, so like one of the concern here is like, uh, is it too much parallelism, like uh, replicating the same structure? But I'm sure it's not the case. So it's kind of appropriating the term editor. Sounds like I kind of like I kind of like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that's I think exactly what we're thinking. Um, and long term, we'd set up elections basically. So, like the editorial board of Nature, like you could elect them um, in theory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think, yeah, I think uh, once we get the DAO involved more, I think that'll be um, <clears throat> really good for us. <clears throat> yeah. So, I think um, the main goals are like we want to focus on this program to grow the community, diversify our content. Uh, encourage discussion, uh, curate quality. So we want to make sure things are looking good. Uh, at the moment, we'll start with an editor is like the only thing we have. Uh, this editor is going to do some things every week. Um, and we're going to pay him essentially a salary in RSC. And each hub can have, we talked about just now, can have one or more editors um because depending on the hub size and our need and stuff like that so and you know every editor to join will earn a salary so um that would be 
the way it works. Um, and the way, like, what we're thinking of, we need to create, like, a set of features to, like, really, imp like, uh, kind of improve, uh, I guess, like, launch this program, but not the launch, but uh, build on it. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to do is expose, like, some kind of a CTA, like, editor program at the top of the navigation, something to make people want to click on it. Once you click on it, it will take you to a landing page. You know, this is a really gamey Reddit page, but it's going to be a landing page with some FAQ, um, you know, maybe some of the general responsibilities that we expect an editor to to take part on, and uh, like a like a link to a form like uh, of the application, like allowing you to apply to become an editor. Once you've applied and we look through the application, if it looks good, then at the moment, uh, Joyce or Anton will jump on a call uh, and interview the editor further. And if they fit what we need, then um, we will approve them to be to become an editor of a specific hub. Um, any questions so far? Anything that sound reasonable to you guys? Okay, so with that said, so once they've become approved, so the next step is like, what do they need to do? So that's what we've been discussing. So they need to do a bunch of things and it's it's all in the air right now. What exactly is gonna be, what's gonna happen is we're probably gonna have a, a set of loose guidelines that they will need to take action. So it's gonna be something like submitting three interesting papers per week to your hub including key takeaways maybe we'll bring back that feature back probably not uh only for like you know editors and uh and the discussion comments so you can't just submit a paper you gotta submit like um some kind of a comment to go with the paper uh to spark a discussion we're talking about like how to also spark more conversation around other features of the site like hypotheses and posts Maybe we will have like the editors create like one hypothesis a month or so, and maybe a couple of posts. Um, definitely wanna reply to comments. So something like reply to five comments with a question or something. So you're not like just starting the conversation, but you're contributing to existing conversation. Um, and you know, in the future, once things get better and we have a DAO more in place, then uh, the quality of task will be reviewed uh, periodically and the review process we will define in the future. Um, and also in the future, the DAO, not just like Joyce and Anton, but the DAO can be the one to, to vote on who should become an editor and who is, um, you know, should be voted out and something like that. Um, and yeah, so, and I think Joyce and Anton, maybe you had like a couple of other things to add to this. Um, yeah, another thing we're thinking about, like maybe supporting, like uh, creating, giving an allowance to editors to support comments and stuff like that To My thing is like, I want to create an economy and economy can be just like one-sided. You got to like spend and we need to like, you know, kick RC in the butt to in the spending direction. So anyway, let me pause here. Uh, what do you guys, anyone has anything to add, questions? What are the current things in Anton, your power user program that's happening? Is this like very similar or is it different? Uh, so the first one is, so yeah, they, they submit the paper and they leave a starter comment. That one they get the most uh, coins for. The second one, they find the paper someone uploaded that has no comments and leave a comment there. And then the third one that they get to twice is they, they ask a question or they do some sort of follow up to other people's comments. So it is similar. Mm -hmm. I do then, wonder like if we try to force people to do some of this stuff after like three weeks, are people going to be like, if there's no engagement on their stuff, are people going to be like, I quit? It's definitely possible, especially for users who do it not just for money. And frankly, we want those users the most, right? right. Uh, 
Right. Uh, they they do they they do it for engagement, right? They do it for right. uh, mm -hmm. communication, and that's why I think it's important that we have specific goals where we ask them to interact with each other or at least with other users. So asking questions, re rewarding quality stuff, all sorts of engagement. I agree. I guess one thing here is like Anton, since the start of your power users program, how many people have dropped off? Uh, well, I would say it is definitely a concern. Yeah, so we had a few super active users and they are occasional users now. And I think now most users do stuff like once per three, three days, perhaps. So what were they doing before to now? Well, before they were posting every day or every other day. Okay, every day. Has, has anybody dropped completely? Give me a second. Uh, hard to say. Yeah, we ha I have a few people who haven't showed up for five days. So I think like we'll probably get something very similar to that happening here. Mm -hmm. I think so, we what we need to understand a little bit is like how much activity do these people need to maintain their velocity? Mm -hmm. You know, and like, like activity from like others yeah yeah it's like i worry about like submit three papers a week it's actually a lot of work to do that after three weeks i can see people being like i'm not doing this anymore i worry about like a lot of this stuff that kind of happening you know because like maybe it's not their main job right like they there's some they're doing other yeah. stuff and then mm -hmm. now they're like why am i doing some of this stuff yeah, okay. I don't know how to get around that 100%. That's why we're thinking, like Joyce and um, Anton and I were just talking, maybe we, instead like of like forcing them to do any particular activity, we just create like a set of things that they can do, and maybe they need to just like do a bunch of those. They, like they, maybe like the papers is optional, but you can also do comments, and you can also do this and that. Because like with comments, at least like there is engagement and it's not so lonely as opposed to papers. Maybe you don't, you really don't have any papers to submit because you haven't read anything this week. So right. for that, for that, I think, so think about it this way. If they're not, if they refuse to do it for money, they're probably not going to do it for free, right? So if you want to take care of our editors, essentially, I hear you, Patrick, and that, uh, Perhaps we should limit the more boring or more effortful tasks, and we should focus on the tasks that feel good to to work on, but they also look like they're a lot of work. So maybe right. the conver think about it this way. So the to start a conversation is, is the hardest step, right? So answering to someone's question is way more manageable, or asking questions. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So maybe we should limit the, the tasks that are like start a conversation and focus more on like continue the conversation type of thing. One thought I have here is like we kind of have this cool opportunity with the power user program that's currently operating to test some of these hypotheses. Yeah. So yeah. maybe we could like readjust the power user program now. If Pat, you're thinking like some of these extra tasks like cause mm -hmm. too much cognitive burden. Yeah, what I'm thinking almost is like there's there's two types of users people who submit papers and then people who like replies to comments you know like i don't know why like in my head like submitting a paper actually feels like a lot of work and i don't know if that's fully true um but it feels like a lot of work to especially three interesting papers a week feels like i don't know it's hard with the summary for sure like if you need to put a good summary it's like 45 minutes to an hour at minimum. And but it's also submitting a paper is easy. It's also, there is a lot of burden on like you, you stake your reputation in a way. Right, that's right? From, yeah, you stake your rep, rep on like what's cool and what's mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. So then it's, it, then you feel like I need to go find something interesting. And then it becomes a different, it's not like I'm just posting a paper, right? It's like I need to find something interesting. The and then you do that that often because that's like a lot of papers, right? Like, each month, what, you, it's 12 papers you got to do? 
I guess and, and that's kind of a lot. Do you, you guys every week come across three papers in your field that you think are interesting? Like how many per week do you come across? You're like, oh shit, like this is kind of cool. But they they're supposed to be interesting for everyone, right? So I I I mostly read boring stuff, so I wouldn't upload any of that. So when I yeah. have to post the interesting stuff, I go out of my way to find it. But an editor, right? Like an editor field, like some mm -hmm. papers are boring. So that, it should be like if you're doing psychology, what's interesting to you as a psychologist? Not necessarily like filtered through the lens of what's going to be popular. But do we want to tailor it to now or do we want to tailor it to a year from now when there is an active community, right? Because right now I can't be like, I'll upload something for just cognitive psychologists because there are none. Mm. Yeah, I think I think uh, I, I see what you're saying. But what do you guys think about just like having a set like uh, what I mentioned earlier, just like a bunch of things you can do. You don't have to do you don't have to focus on only submitting a paper. You can do comments instead. So as you mentioned, like start a conversation or continue a conversation. Um, yeah. And then you can choose. I wonder if yeah. like we're putting too much work on one group of people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And especially disproportional, we actually put disproportional work on diligent and, you know, people right. who care, right? Because they, they produce the most uh, intricate stuff. Uh, so if you if you guys think this is a direction, I can go back and think of the different set of tasks that feel good more, the less burden. Yeah, I mean, if you if you can think of anything, I just don't know what other things we have on the site that can do that other than comments. Like, what other things you can do that uh, to socially engage? Uh, I don't know. So it. Even within comments, we can figure out multiple ways people can do stuff, right? We can uh, ask people to do more like thread type of thing, right? To converse on one specific topic. We can ask people to uh, ask questions. We can ask people to answer those questions uh, within comments, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is why I think like uh, the guidelines thing is good. So like with comments, we can just like thing number one you can do and then thing number two and thing number three and then you can do that um and we learn from it i just don't i guess i don't know what is good and i think another thing is that um and maybe you guys you know don't share the same perspective but i think it's a good opportunity for people that are joining us and we're all only seeing it from like oh we're kind of asking them to do a lot which we are but also it's like uh I think that's going, you know, research hub is going to become like a big thing. And that's why I'm here. And I think that's uh, the people that join uh, should feel that way. And we should send a clear message that they're here to help us grow. And right now we're in a really, it's kind of like there is going to be a bit of a lonely phase and it's, you need to help us grow um but then it, they they do but they burn out as they do so. yeah then they burn out is the problem yeah they burn I, out i do want, okay. i wonder if we should split this program instead of being like all because if we think about like reddit let's say the mods on reddit they might help a subreddit by posting more but like they're not going to be posting every day either you know like because it's too much work it feels like to do that and so it, it almost feels like we need to like another group and the group like posting papers. It feels like it almost feels like we need them to like, they're already reading the paper. So then they post it, you know, and then they post a comment on it because they're already doing that work. So it doesn't feel like extra work. I don't know. That's just, I'm just spitballing something. Yeah. No, I see uh, what you're saying. I just, mm -hmm. I don't know how to um yeah i guess I, I really don't know how to that would look you know, it, it's true i think eventually so, so eventually i think we can move to more like engagement based metrics like if you manage to in initiate a bunch of conversations that that's what what your pay depends on but for now, I think we can try a different approach. Or like, like you said, we have an active uh, power user program. 
somewhat active power user program that we can try experiment with how about we dedicate the next week to try and the feels feels good tasks and like see it. where it leads us or what, what if we try this like you as an editor like if you bring in like five people who post papers like you don't have to post the papers right but if you get people to post papers you know because either they're in your lab you know they're in your vicinity like they're already working on this thing they're going to post the paper they're going to make a comment like that goes towards you as well recruiting people is difficult actually you think so <laughs> yeah in my experience people people struggle it's definitely not to feel good uh, because you also stake a reputation right you invite a person to some place right what if they don't like this place and you're inviting your friends what if what if the what if the pitch is different like these guys help us tell other people like hey join research hub claim your 100 rsc whatever by just posting a paper like post a paper and then like their job may be to then comment on these people's posts i don't know i think we could do something where like it's not like a referral specifically but just right. the editors earn tokens if their hub grows by three percent every month or something when it comes to active yeah. users like something simple like that where we don't tell them what to do just help grow the hub and you earn some extra tokens um anton i totally think we should switch up the power user program this week though and like mm -hmm. message everybody and say hey we're trying something new we want to see how it yeah. changes behavior you know like because we eventually mm -hmm. want it to feed mm -hmm. into this but yeah we should totally do it this week to yeah. see if we can kickstart anything so it should be like the right. power user i mean this editor program should be dynamic that's what i'm hearing like where one week you focus on one thing and another week you focus on something else depending on what anton feels and you joyce feel is right direction for that week do you guys think it'd be easy to have like um hey if you grow your hub by five percent every month you get some added you know bonus rsc i think it would take like a week to build something like that yeah it, 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 it will be sorry oh, uh, rather than micromanage of like comments or questions or whatever right. just right. put it up to them hey grow this and that probably entails like comments questions you know lots of different things but you let the person have the autonomy it does so so this one it probably is for later stages right when we have you know active new influx of users because right now you're like I'm trying, I'm doing my best, posting very compelling mm -hmm. questions and everything, but no one right. is reading. What can I do? You know, right, right, right. Yeah. And right now, growing a hub, like when, you know, growing a hub with no users by 5% is, uh, I, I, I guess maybe it's still worthwhile because I'm saying like there is no, a lot of action. And maybe, maybe we should do it. I don't know. So uh, the people that uh, um, Brian is reaching out to to be these editors are like um, YouTubers who like PhDs mm. or okay. who have audiences. They have audience. I think there oh. are scientists too who also have audiences where like like if you're a famous scientist with fifty thousand followers on Twitter, you know you'd you'd probably be pretty good at growing hubs. And so yeah, I think Especially for those people. Let me jump in real quick. I don't think they would want to do a lot of this stuff, you know, because like they're like, oh, I got other shit that fulfills me, you know, I don't want to just be here doing grunt work. Right. So it does feel like we need something different to kickstart. And then these guys are here to bring their audience in kind of thing. And like then they're, they're here to be like, oh, I'll give you my stamp of approval because I think this paper is cool and I think this thing is cool. Mm -hmm. as well. it's cool. Yeah, what you're saying, Pat, is that we need something that's very like intrinsically rewarding to these people. Not even, yeah, for these types of people, yeah. I'm almost thinking like we, we have two problems. One is we don't have enough papers being submitted, right? And then like, Partly because of that, like we don't have enough people commenting on the papers. Like we have these two things going on. In my mind, I'm like, okay, there's so many PhDs reading papers every week and like they can post their analysis of a paper, right? Can't we just tell them, hey, we're gonna give you RSC, you know, like just show up, do it. You're gonna get RSC. Ideally, when we do that, like a lot of people show up, they'll do it some of them will stay because they're like i like what i like this you know and then they'll start doing it normally and then like they'll also look at other 
papers because they're like, oh, I like this community. And so just think, based on that, we will capture people. Like and then that will continue to grow. You mean like like key takeaways or something like that? Or? No, no, not even key takeaways. Just make a comment. Like, here oh. is my thoughts on this paper. This is why I think it's good or whatever. Like, these are my this is my analysis, basically. Yeah, but now you're getting into like, how do we get these people? Which is, that's a struggle. That's the difficult part. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, okay, what do we do? Because right now we're trying to incentivize people to become editors, to do this work. What I'm thinking is like, I it's too much doing. work for an, one editor to do. So why don't we try to get like hundreds of thousands of people to do this work? You know, like each do one thing, right? And our, our pull is like, we're going to give you RSC, you know, like we're going to give you the same RSC would give the editor to do some of this stuff. We're going to give you some RSC, whether that's 50 bucks. Like if we tell people it's 50 bucks, I'm sure a lot of people show up and be like, oh yeah, I'll spend like 20 minutes doing this for 50 bucks. You know, like it's nothing. And then we're the problem, the hope is some of them will stay, right? It's the quality control becomes a problem, right? Yeah. When you have an uncontrolled influx of users posting things just to get 50 bucks. But we, we need, we, I feel like we need a big base like that to then have a smaller group who stays because then these editors can do their job, right? Then these editors can be like, oh, there's like 50 papers submitted this week. Like, let me comment on the most interesting ones. Maybe it's hard for them still, but like, maybe they love reading papers, you know, and it's like, oh, they already know all these papers. And so that gives like very clear, like, I don't know. It, it feels to me that like, it makes a distinction between what you're doing here and like, um, it makes it easier for you to not burn out maybe potentially. Isn't that like Pat, like a referral program then with specific actions that you need to take after a referral? Almost, yeah. Um, but I think like we would need to lead that almost. Where like we would need to potentially like or like get these editors to go lead that. Where they somebody's going to the universities telling people that you can do, you can get RSC for doing this thing. Like it needs to like we we need somebody to get that word out there, you know. So kind of an outreach mechanism. Yeah, we somehow need to get the word out there that hey, you can earn RSC for doing X Y Z. Yeah. So, so I, I it's not to to merge these two ideas. I think Brian's idea is the editor is that person who's like right. the editor is the person. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to reach out to all these biochemistry students at UC Berkeley, and I've got like maybe a pot of two thousand RSC I can give out in fifty RSC increments to stuff I find cool. But right. but yeah, like that human, like the person is working almost for research hub kind of to help grow the hub. So yeah. maybe maybe the right. editors that we pick are not just like smart people. I don't know. Like, do we need to pick people that that can reach audiences? Like, oh, you're like person that knows a bunch of people in a school, or you're you have a YouTube and you have a bunch of members um, that you can refer to, like. I don't know. What do you guys think? Like, it seems like we, we just need more people, as Pat said, like, uh, and then, you know, then we can, um, the quality can be assured afterwards. I totally think so, Kobe. I, I think it can definitely start off as like growth marketing and then end up as like quality control in a decade down the road. So... With that being said, like, okay, so the editor program, the, one of the responsibilities is outreach. Maybe we just need to make it a general responsibility to outreach. Is there a way we can quantify the outreach? Like, yeah, if we say like, oh, general response, I know we're out of time, by the way, if you guys have to drop off, you can drop off, but this is a heated topic and it's very important to figure out, so. What do we do with this outreach? Do we say a, a general guideline or do we, provide some kind of a, I don't know, like how do we make this a thing? Any ideas on this one? My thought here is just the growth of the hub. So just like weekly active users or maybe monthly active users um, where it's just, they have a added incentive to grow the users, which, you know, entails reaching out to people. I think we can tell people 
like basically the, the the tasks you have here three papers a week whatever we we can tell people that you don't have to post these you can get if you get other people to post these then it also qualifies you you know like right like or like maybe we don't even want you to post these we want you to find three other people okay. yeah it's more like find people not necessarily bring new people but even could be existing people could be existing yeah just get people just to post. Post. yeah and yeah. like I, I wonder if this is different from the editor program because it's not clear to me like that eleanor shiki who's on youtube would want to do this kind of work um but there's probably someone out there who would you know who wants to earn rsc yeah do we need to call out like when a hub needs help that we need your help and you can earn RSC directly proportional to how much we need your help with? Yeah, how much? We, probably, like, yeah, we could probably come up with a whole scheme of like, yeah, like this hub we need this hub has zero people in it. We need to get it kickstarted. So like your referrals are worth more, you know? Yeah, like basically like uh, you leave a comment. I mean, yeah, I guess like if a hub is zero, you let's take that example, hub is zero active users and we really need your help. We can say like, oh, you can earn the most RSC by leaving a comment that gets, that qualifies, the qualification is a bit tricky, but let's say like Anton or someone needs to say it's qualified. And then you earn the 500 RSC. If a hub is a billion, then you earn maybe like one RSC or something like that. I don't know if it will work, but like something along the lines of. Yeah. Like that. You remember, Joyce, the RSC giveaway? People mm -hmm. recruited people to join that. The only thing was, is like we didn't ever screen for quality. And so like shit became low quality. I do wonder if like part of the criteria we do have is like stuff is needs to be high quality. And like you're, you're not necessarily the poster that that program would actually kind of work. I mean, like, yeah, because people did recruit other people to go comment, upvote, whatever. Like, it, it did happen, but, like, that's not the people we wanted. So. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think these editors probably should be trying to recruit people. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the editor should be trying to recruit people. Do does it make sense to to do some kind of a giveaway with a comment that has re, meets the bar of a certain quality? I think this is very easily like we look. You, you can look at it and be like, "Is this what we want? Yes or no? If not, like you don't make your cut. You know, I think it's very easy for us to look at that, like an editor endorsement or something yeah like editor yeah. editor endorsement maybe editor endorsement or yeah, if the editor just i mean yeah like endorsement or some editor like it could be like not the editor of that no it, i don't think it needs to be endorsed by the editor necessarily but just like the editor can look at it and be like editor. is this person like a real real person who's not trying to spam and collect coins but like actually yeah yeah, yeah yeah basically very easy to tell if yeah. the comment that someone you're saying like if the comment someone leaves is approved just basically by looking at it and saying like yeah. hey, it looks legit okay yeah get on we can we can have visibility over editors just looking at yeah like what hubs are they managing let's check it out let's check out what's going on yeah um, editors very easy will be yeah. approved and over time with the DAO. yeah we can, yeah if it was if these guys started getting like really crappy content we just look at it and be like yeah you guys need to improve your content or you kick from the program yeah i think it's easy so like in addition so editor is going to do like the outreach like they're going to do some outreach but in addition to that do we still think it's worth calling explicitly saying like we need your help on this hub leave a comment you can earn this much rc if the if an research hub endorsed user or whatever editor approves you I think so. Sometimes uh, when I'm on Reddit, I'll get uh, notifications that's like, hey, 1,500 people have visited this, you know, subreddit in the last week, but nobody's commented or shared a post. Like, click here to share a post. So I think something like that would be cool. 
Okay, I like that. I'm just thinking there might be some kind of a way to abuse it, but I like it right now. I like it right now. Um, I know we're over time. Um, Joyce, is there anything else you wanted to chat about? I I'll think about this a little more. There is more I wanted to share with you guys, but I think, you know, we are kind of don't have a lot of time. Um, I guess the only thing I'm, uh, is just Nami, like your general thoughts on the whole thing. It would be awesome to just know your like uh, high level impressions. Yeah. Um, so I was being, I've been thinking like why people are dropping, like just like that's the kind of thing of burnout. And I mean, I'm social scientist, a social psychologist. So how much like user interacting with each other and uh, maybe you already have metrics on that. And then like how much they stick together or not might be a interesting thing to look at because that if that's the case, you can uh, target resources to social interactions as well. That's just um, like the coins are important, but also like you can also have another wheel, right? Like we are doing cool stuff and uh, as a community and we like, stick together. So um, that's just what my thoughts uh, are going this into your things. But yeah, great work. I have a quick question for you, Nami. Like, let's say like, I don't know, you, you could earn... 50, 200 RSC, you don't really know what it means, right? But you could earn some RSC for just posting a paper and posting a comment on a paper. How likely are you to do that? Just like somebody Anything. told me. Like, yeah, somebody I mean, comes and tells you, hey, go to this site, post this paper that you you just read and post your analysis on it. You can earn 200 RSC. It might be 50 bucks, it might be 100 bucks. What would you think? I I sus maybe uh, like that. You sus yourself initially. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and so, how much trust do I have with this person? Right? I maybe like right. I do. Yeah, uh, or like uh, oh maybe like I think about opinions value. Like oh this person is asking actually my opinions. Maybe I can put it that right there. Like those things. Um, yeah. Yeah, like the RSC only. I don't know. Maybe I'm that kind of person. I'm not sure. That's that's kind of hard for me, like because it's hard to explain too, right? Like right now, it does no monetary money wants to say it, so yeah, right, right. Yeah, this le leads me to think even more that we need to explain what RSC is in a more prominent location if we're gonna go down this route of RSC, like basically like saying, hey, we need your help, you can earn some RSC. Okay, what is RSC kind of thing? Um, because yeah, people might be sus. Yeah. Well, uh, be, on my note, like I think I, you had somewhere there that like me meeting for editors only things like that, and that so that was interesting because that just can make people stick together, and when they're burning out, like they can support each other. Uh, I'm not sure it's happening in the power of program, Anton. You don't have a question for Anton, but yeah, yeah. Anton, do, do you kind of for that? No, Anton left. He left. Yeah, he oh, yeah. Off. yeah, it kind of is like there's a Slack channel for it. No, there was a lot of energy in the beginning, but now it's kind of tapered a little bit. Do you, do you think there's any value in making this uh, invite only, where like you basically already have a social relationship with the person who invites you to like have that air of collegiality? Uh, yeah, um, I think at this point of time, I would say yes, because like I've, I mean, in the future should be open, but right now it's like a kind of cool thing that people, like small group of people are doing to make a better change, right? So that's the feel to it. So probably, and maybe for now, that's the way to go in my head, but I know you, you need to expand later and the openness and things like that kicks in later. But right now, the answer it would be yes to that question. Um, yeah, thanks, Nami. No, this uh, this all makes sense. Um, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff that came out of this topic. Anything else you guys want to chat? Like, basically, the other thing I wanted to say, like, I want power users to have some filters. Uh, basically, this is mainly for like <laughs> Pat some filters for like missing abstracts or like uh, missing editorial titles, something like that, missing authors where they can go and fix um, the stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, uh, and in the future I was like, oh, if we can automate it, great. Right now we can't automate the payment because we, we're gonna go with like a, a dynamic type of program where we're gonna learn from it and it's gonna be like a loose set of guidelines from what 
I have gathered. It makes no sense to um, say like, oh, submit one paper or three papers per week because people might hate that uh, and we don't want them to drop off. But in the future, maybe it makes sense. Um, just not now. I wonder too, with like our power user program currently, like if we had notifications on people, like if we had built in some email updates for the people who have dropped off to be like, Hey, come on back. You know, like if part of it's just due to the, you know, manual like engagement loop. Yeah. Like pulling people back is something that I think would happen. And we could definitely build something in there to see what it would do. Um, I do think though that like we have a small problem of like there's not enough engagement, you know, for people to come back, right? So they're excited the first week, two weeks, but then it feels monotonous. Mm -hmm. And that's a problem we need to solve. Like we're going to lose anybody who come, you know, like any editors who come in, they're going to be excited the first week, two weeks, they're going to do a lot of stuff. And after that, if they don't get that like dopamine rush, they're going to leave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. We got to hire trolls to disagree with people. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think that that's one of the things you're working on of adding discussions to the homepage. I think would help. I'm not saying it's going to solve the problem yeah. or not, but yeah, I I don't know what it'll do, but yeah, but I I just I feel like we need to like tap into. There's so many of these. There's so many people reading a paper. You know, mm -hmm. we just need to reach just some of them to go post the paper they're reading this week post a comment yeah but that's like the, the tricky part that's why like if there was someone that can do the outreach like let's say pat you had a youtube channel with two thousand viewers that are academics and you can say in, in like hey you're reading a paper it's interesting yeah post the research hub yeah 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 and that would be kind of cool thing um yeah yeah or like if you have some kind of a connection i don't know how to tap into it other than that, I wish I did. I don't know, but I see what you're saying. Like people are doing it anyway. Like how do yeah. you, to you just, yeah, we just need to figure out a way to reach them. And maybe the editor program is the right thing, but maybe it's not, I'm, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think, I think it's a step, at least I, I think it's a step in the right direction. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll, uh, start with that and learn from it i i guess i'm what i'm going to do next i'm going to just take everything we talked about and digest it and make like a, the next iteration of this document and uh maybe we can joey's pet we can i don't know talk about it tomorrow or something like that yep yeah it sounds good to me yep. yeah thanks for presenting kobe yeah no problem uh let me stop presenting uh, anything else, Joyce? I'm gonna give it back to you in case you wanted to talk about anything else. No, I'm good. Thanks, thanks for coming, Nami. Appreciate all the feedback. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay, see you next week. Bye. See you guys. Bye. 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 Bye.